come to this thing a year later. You know, they'll spend in, at the Berliner Ensemble, or for example, I know they spend about a year developing a single production. And, and that amount of time with, with all the collaborators together, and jamming and also having the chance, I think, the other thing is because we have so little time usually, we don't have time to bang up against each other and sort of have a good fight, really. Like, I, have to get, I get that with the playwright if I'm part of a playwriting process, but I don't often get that with the, the design process, and I, I feel like that's, we're, under, we're underserving on some, on some, in some, not always, but sometimes you don't need it, but I, I do think that's something. Yeah, but in order to have a good fight, you have to have, have a certain trust, right? That's right, yeah. Because we're all too afraid to fight, in a sense, we're afraid we'll lose the job or whatever. For sure, no, but I also think you need time to have a good fight. Like you need the time to develop the relationship so everybody knows where they're at. And that's what I'm do those 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 where people collide with those little fights. I think they're part of the, they're part of the only opportunities where where you can create something that neither one of you would have thought of. Because um, without that, then it just it's a place that, like I'm doing a show now, and I don't have any resistance from the director, and I feel like it's, it could be so much better than my show is. <laughs> And I, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm happy, but, I, but I, I've got zero resistance. And now we're in rehearsal, and then things are now like, oh, do we have this, do we have this? And I'm like, well, that's a completely different conceit than how we have matched. So it's, it's like, I need, I need that. I need that little bit of resistance and that little bit of back and forth, because then, then, you, then you both collide and you promote something that you wouldn't even, even conceive of. And it's that much better. I think that's what's that's what I love. Like you know, the most uh, successful collaborations, the most fun collaboration. And that's funny to me because you know, being an artistic director of a company and a producer, sometimes the major resistance to really our dreaming is the funding. Yeah. <laughs> like and and that's when we go, well, I want this. Well, you can't have it because we can't afford it. So let's move on. And and sometimes what we come up with. With the littlest money is actually the most like most genius thing. And sometimes we talk about like, okay, if the Mervish just picked this up, it'd be still the same production. Of, oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. By the end of it, you're like, you can't imagine it. Any yeah. Other way, yeah. even if you had a million bucks, you wouldn't change. Yeah. 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 For example, like People Power and Banana Boys were very, I mean, seemingly very simple shows, but obviously the result of a lot of collaboration. When did you first realize that you needed to work this way? Like, did you always work this way, or? Uh, for me, I mean, I didn't go to a formal director's camp or something. <laughs> I really took, you know, what was funny is, you know, I, I really took one directing course, like fundamentals of directing, um, and then they just threw me in you know, my final year to direct, you know, a show at the University of Guelph. Um, and so I think whatever I learned uh, from that course, you know, I know that my professor always said, yeah, you have to be best friends with your set designer. I mean, your designers, basically. And I think, you know, I came out of that thinking that that was the way it works. And that's how I treat my designers. Like, they're my, you know, you call it posse. I, I, we call each other the board. Um, just because, you know, Texas. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> well, that's true, you are. Yeah. No. Um, don't use the excuse. Um, so, you know, I mean, because there is, once, you know, the jamming and the fighting and the agreeing and whatnot come together, you know, coming out of those two day workshop, designers workshop things and going into a show, it feels like, yeah, we have one language and have a shorthand that it's, you know, that we totally can communicate with each other that, um, you know, nobody else will understand in the world what we do and we just work faster, more efficient, and just really, you know, um, unified in the vision. And the vision is just so much strengthened and so much richer coming out of that. But, but how do you talk to each other? Because we, we, Kami and I did a, a, a tour, little tour on the last Wednesday, and, we, and one of the people there was talking about he'd had a really good collaboration. And I really think that what they, he was meaning was that they, they talked a lot. You know, that they talked, you know, you, you do. Everybody understands that you have to get your people together and you have to talk. But somehow it has to do with the quality of the talking, I think. 
and maybe it relates back to what you were saying about the levels, like the depth that Neil Monroe, for example, went into the St. Jones. And what do you actually talk to a director and designer about? It depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the you talk about particular collaboration that I can talk a little bit about King Charles mm -hmm. how we talked about that because that was a kind of that was a wonderful process for me. I really got some <coughs> the process. Um, we started this is in King Charles Golden Days and at the Shaw Festival this summer. Mm -hmm. And um, Kemi and I, so it was both of our first time to do a Shaw play. So that and it's also the, one of the denser, less obvious Shaw plays that were ever written. It's also, got, it's also our first production. Production together. We collaborated on other things, but we haven't actually done a show together before. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's a, sh a show with a very odd shape. It has uh, two scenes, but the first scene is about almost two and a half hours long, and the second scene is about a half an hour in an entirely different location. So we had a kind of, it, cre it provided a wonderful set of conundrums for us. And there's absolutely no plot. So there was, there was no reason for anything to happen, aside from Shaw had put the people in the room and had them talk. So we had to kind of like come to grips in terms of the play in, it, in and of itself. And I had a lot of ideas about the play. It brought up a lot of images and, and, and references, and, and I had this sort of back of my mind idea, because it's, 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 it's sort of Shaw's restoration comedy, if, if ever there could be such a thing. And, um, and for me, it reminded me of those TV shows that Steve Allen used to do called Meeting of Minds, where he would invite Cleopatra and Shakespeare, and they would have it out on TV as a talk show. Um, so I kind of thought it's kind of like one of those TV shows where the famous people are, in, and the, the famous people exist in time all the time, and they kind of come together. So Cammy and I started meeting. We actually read through the play together out loud, which was high there, <laughs> the two of us playing all these different people, and um, and then and then Cammy had come up with this wonderful list of, uh, of contradictions. In the, or, or not contradictions, but sort of um, light versus opposites. dark, the opposites, yeah. Right. Religious opposites. versus politics, uh, the, all these different, or sorry, religion versus science, or uh, things like that, all, all like a huge list of them, and we talked about them and went through them. And by the end of that first meeting, I, I just said, I gave Cammy the directive, I said, what we need is a time machine. And it was ridiculous, you know, it was like, what's, what, that's meaningless, and it's, you know, there's nothing kind of to hang on to, but Thankfully, Cami did started doing her research, and she came across this this because uh, Isaac Newton is a character in the play, and the Newtonian universe is was defined at this time. They they had little models of it called orreries that were literally models of the universe, and they were on a clock like they worked like a clock. You wound them up, and they would, and they have gears and everything, and so that became our our center for the whole thing, our metaphor for it. And, and from that, then it just, we just, it literally took off from there. And, and it was a time machine. It had all of the, it was abstract and yet concrete. It, it provided everything. It, it really was an amazing sort of, the whole thing just, after you did that, we went poof, and the whole thing came into the place. Mm -hmm. That fit place really easily, really nicely. And, and of course. Force. But what was wonderful, the best moment for me was we were sitting there and it was almost time for the finals. We had our prelims in, it was almost time to give the finals. And we were looking at the set together and it was round originally. Perfectly round. Perfect circle with a railing. And we both were looking at it and looking at it and then I was like, I don't, I don't know. And Kathy said, do you think it should be an ellipse? Because there's, it's all, there's a lot of talk about the ellipsis of orbits and everything. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> And she had to rebuild the whole model. She had to go back. So funny. So anyway, so it but it, it actually what it did with what she, that that little shift had done was astonishing for the space and what it the the, the energy it gave the space and the energy it gave the actors, like the actors loved the set. It was raked and round and they loved it. Like how is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so, so, um, so it, but it was because of the, uh, the level of immersion that we both kind of agreed to. And then 
from that, we were able to bring Michael and uh, Bonnie in 